Hello everybody, welcome to Sylvester's Fashion Art and Tarot, and today I'm going to be talking about Miss Eunice Walker Johnson. Uh, she was the uh, coordinator for the Ebony Fashion Fair. You see, she was also wife of John H. Johnson, who was the uh, owner, CEO of, uh, yeah, and CEO of um, Ebony Magazine, Jet Magazine other publications I'm not familiar with, but uh, those are the primary ones that I'm aware of. And I want to start this off by talking about my brief encounter with Miss Eunice Johnson. I've actually met her in the 90s when I was living here in Chicago. Uh, they were at the McCormick Hotel. I mean, they were showing in Chicago, I think around November. So I always do one of months when they come through here. Cause the Ebony Fashion Fair is a traveling show. It's the only one of its kind. And no one was doing this but her. And she was doing it for charity. So all the proceeds, all the money that was made was going to uh, charity charity organizations. And it was to help people go back to school, help the Negro, like such as uh, uh, the Negro's College Fund, other... Um, um, organizations that need assistance with you know um, getting more money uh, the Ebony Fashion Fair helped with that so yeah so it, it did a lot it really helped out a lot of people um, and she's been doing it since 1958 okay um, just a just a brief mention um there were actually there were three ladies that initially started the Ebony Fashion Fair, and the first one was uh, Jesse Dent, who came up with the idea, and then there was Frida the Knight, who developed it, and then of course Miss Eunice Johnson, who backed the show from the, from its beginning and who has presided over it since 1958. Um, first, my brief encounter with her, and then I get more into her story. Uh, I met her at the Ebony Fashion Fair. I remember sitting with these two other ladies at the event, and I was telling oh, how I, I was telling her how much I would love to meet Miss Jones Johnson. And they told her she's sitting over there. She's right over there, right across. I, and I saw it. I said, I was so nervous. I wasn't sure if I should get up and go meet her. Uh, of course, at that time, I was a young, aspiring fashion designer myself. Still am. <laughs> um... Anyway, to make a long story short, I got up, went over, introduced myself to her, let her know I was a designer, and um, it, it was just a brief encounter. She didn't really make a big, it wasn't like this big grand meeting or anything, but when I was talking to her, uh, it was very brief, and she was in the middle of doing something. She was writing some notes down, and... Um, Anyway, I, I just briefly told her who I was, my name, and and um, I'm an, you know I'm a designer myself, blah blah blah. Because also they feature black designers, they do it, and they and they present them alongside the European designers. So which was a great deal, and I was hoping for one day I get to hear my name across that stage and have the models wear something I've created, and that's always been like this thing for me to have to be a part of something like that um yeah I would have loved that but you know Ebony Fashion Fair is no more they ran for 50 years they ended their show in I think 2008 I think that was it yeah because they started back in 1958 okay um let me see. I also want to mention I did have the privilege of meeting Mr. Uh, John H. Johnson, but it was very brief, too. Um, it was the same night I met his wife. Uh, he was standing outside the door. I was walking through, and the person I was going with at that time mentioned that that was John H. Johnson. I didn't even recognize him. I didn't even, you know, didn't, uh, didn't, I didn't even, it was, he wasn't in my mind or in my mindset when I saw him. Um, I was too busy thinking about going to see the show. I was too excited to see the show. I wanted to see, this, I wanted to see the clothes and the presentation. 
anyway, uh, unfortunately I don't have a photograph of that, but, um, but anyway, I, I ran into him and I realized I'm a little taller than him. I didn't realize he was a little short. <laughs> uh, so was his wife. They're around the same height, somewhat. Well, I said she's shorter than him. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that was my brief encounter. But anyway, uh, the first time I went to the Ebony Fashion Fair, my mom took me. And my mom talked about the Ebony Fashion Fair, and and I, and I she would go to the shows, but one day she decided to let me go with her. I guess because she knew how much I love fashion, and she was really supporting me on that, and she took me to my first Ebony Fashion Fair, and I think it was 19, was it 88, or was it, uh, or was it 2000, no, 1990, 1990, 1989. I think it was the late 80s, maybe the 89. Um, I was so excited. Oh, it was such a spectacular show. And we got front row seats. We're more like the third seats, but it was such a good view. And my mom really spurred on those seats, and I love her so much for that. I, she was such a great supporter for what I love to do, and I thank her so much for that. I really do. I love you, Mom. Thank you for that. That was really special. And I remember sitting next to this one uh, lady sitting beside me. And she she kept seeing how excited I was to see the show. She kept staring at me. I'm trying to watch the show. Why this girl staring at me? And uh, I guess she was looking at my assignment my excitement of seeing the show and uh, the presentation those ladies know how to walk that runway mm, they really knew how to wear those clothes they knew how to present the clothes they, I love when they do the twists and turns and, and they walk in rhythm to the music oh man it was so exciting I really love it if you ever had the privilege of seeing an uh, Ebony Fashion first show Believe me, it is worth going to see a show. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm still thinking about it to this day. You know, I have publications from, not exactly from that time, but more um, more in the 2000s, because after that show, I was hooked on seeing the show. I would go every year to see a show. I think there was a couple times I couldn't go, but that because only because other things prevented me. But out of my whole year, what was going on, whatever was going on in my life through my trials and tribulation, I knew I was going to go see the Ebony Fashion Fair when it comes in town because it was my only highlight. It was my only. It was a special thing that I did because my mom got me started on that, and the tickets wasn't really that expensive, and. I got a good seat, and I would go and, and really enjoy myself. Really enjoy myself. Oh my God, it was a special treat. After a whole year, whatever I was going through, I would actually spurge and go see a show. It was very special. It was very special. I really, really, really enjoyed the Emily Fashion Fair. And um, I'll never forget it never forget it and I love the way they um, present the designers like they'll say from the house of Christian Dior Paris or they'll say uh, Oscar de la Renta New York I just love that and I would just imagine my name being called from um, what would I call myself from the house of Sylvester Paris Oh my god, I just get so excited. Oh my god, I just love that. Oh my god, I just really love that. Oh, I really love fashion. I don't think people really, really know how much I really do. You know, it, it's, it's difficult when you talk to non-fashion people, you know. But but I, I'm a maker of the clothes, because I went to school to, to learn fashion and learn to make the clothes. 
But now I'm trying to get back into the groove along with other things I'm doing because I'm also creating art. I do tarot. I'm, um, I'm doing that as well. I also have an Etsy shop. Um, oh, my Etsy shop. <laughs> um, uh, just, I'm on Etsy under Sylvester Fashion Art. And um, check it out. I just added a few new things in there. So please feel free to take a look at it. That's right on Etsy. Okay. Talk about a shameless plug. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, what else? Um, oh, God. Yeah, such good times. And also, during later times when I went to go see Ebony Fashion Fair, I would run into some of the past commentators like Audrey Smalls. Oh, my God. She knows how to present. She, she was a good commentator. She knew how to. Um, present the clothes and she knows how to talk about them and give it attitude and things like that you know and uh, she was such an amazing person to meet amazing person because I met her in 19, 2008 when Ebony Fashion Fair came in town to be at the Apollo and she was there and, and that was the last show that was the last run because when Eunice Johnson died no the following year she lied the following year so they, that was so when the show ended when she died it ended with her or of her because she passed on so um, they didn't continue it on because mm. I tell you if the show was still running I still go <laughs> um, yeah it was good to see some special people oh I ran into Stephen Burrows he was a black designer I ran into uh, Pat Cleveland she was a model. She used to model. And I didn't know at the time, but she used to model for Ebony Fashion Fair back in the uh, early 70s. Uh, I think from 70 to 74, something like that. And uh, right after that time, her career skyrocketed from Ebony Fashion Fair. Yeah. And also during that time, Eunice Johnson, when she was buying the clothes from Paris, one of the, one of the designers she was talking to, I think his name was... Uh, I think it's Emilio, Emilio Pucci. Um, said, I need some black models. Do you know some? And, and uh, this is what his daughter was saying. And so, anyway, she said, oh, yeah. So he, even Eunice Johnson said herself, she would uh, tell them about her models. She would lend her models to them, you know, to the designers. Because she wanted to get more black models on the runway. So she had a lot to do with having seeing black girls on that runway because they love the way the black girls was running and plus in Paris they are a bit racist they are not a bit they are <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's unfortunate really because creativity is very fluid it shouldn't have any um, uh, uh, racial uh, bias to it but you know but you know some people they can't let go of certain things anyway uh, what do I begin where do I start? <laughs> I'm all over the place right now because I'm so excited. <laughs> um, uh, what else? So she had a lot to do with black models on her way. Some of the girls got really famous. Um, that really got their fashion career started after the Ebony Fashion Fair. And they started working for Valentino, Pierre Cardin, Bill Blas, Oscar de la Renta. Um, some of the top leading European designers as well as New York designers. Um, yeah. So she had a lot to do with uh, black models being on the runway. Uh, what else? Um, yeah. Well, let me show you some of this, some of the magazines I have. Here's this one right here. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, look at that. And this one's by, uh, this is by, I can't even tell. I was going to say kind of more, but I'm not sure if it's her. Oh, this is uh, Miss Eunice Johnson. All right, that's her. Yeah. Yeah. And this would be the list of all the designers that they show. There, let me just read a few. From American designers, Anna Sui, B. Michaels. B. Michael is a black designer. Uh, you have Bill Blas, you have Carolina Herrera. Who else? You have Italian designers like, um, who else? Uh, Valentino, Giacomo Ferreira, uh, Dolce Gabbana, uh, who else? Mazzoni, 
uh, Roberto Cavalli, French designers would be Christian Dior, uh, Jacques Fin, uh, uh, Karl Lagerfeld, Chanel, uh, Christian Lacroix, uh, Dominique Chirot, uh, who else? Pia Cardin, uh, uh, Paco Rabanne, uh, Nina Ricci. British designers would be uh, Rolling uh, uh, Kane, uh, who else? Terence Nolder, Bruce Oldfield. Japanese designers would be Sun and Moon. Uh, and then Canadian designers, Outlook. Anyway, they would get designers from all over just presenting the show. And she wanted clothes that really uh, made a statement because she knew her audience. You know? She really knew her audience. And uh, who else? There's another magazine cover right here. I love this dress. Oh my god, isn't that beautiful? I just love this dress. Oh my god, that is so absolutely fabulous. Here's another photograph of this Eunice Johnson again. And she is looking fabulous. You know? Mm. Oh. oh my god, can you just gag? Oh my god, isn't that fabulous? Oh, can you just throw the wally in that? Oh my god, I just... Ooh. My goodness. Oh my god. Oh. Let's see. Oh, look at these hot little lumbers right here. Oh. Can you see? Mm. Oh my god. I love the way they present black beauty. Uh, black is always so beautiful with them. And black is always going to be beautiful. Darling. Oh my god. It definitely will be. Let me see that. Show this one. Look at that. Oh my god, that's spectacular. Uh, simply spectacular. This is 02 to 03. Oh my god. Let me see. Here she is again. This is mm. Let me see. Uh, here's a Vivian Westwood dress. This She's a British designer. She died a few years ago. Um, I did a reading on her, so you can check that out. You'll find that. On my uh, on my YouTube channel. Let me see. Oh, there's a lot here. Let me see. Oh, look at that. Here's the itinerary. And here's the model right here presenting that. Isn't that nice? Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Mm. Oh my God. Oh, and here's some photographs from the 1958 when it first started. You know. This is how some, some of the models featured back in that time. You know, as she first started out, they were just doing it for a launching. But then, all of a sudden, people, some people suggested that she just be shown everywhere. And, um, and somehow, it just became a, the only traveling fashion show of its kind. And so when she first, when they first started, it was kind of hard because they would go to the shows and nobody knew who they were in Paris. They had a business card. Like, what is every fashion firm? What's that? You know, these are French people. <laughs> they don't know what that is. They thought they were some kind of uh, 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 store or something like that, from my understanding. Uh, but anyway, I think when they start spending the money, that's when things change. Of course, they, you know, because designers are not going to lend clothes. They're not. I mean, you, the clothes are going to be worn like what over two hundred times. On the runway, I mean, there's going to be a little bit of wear and tear. Obviously, they had to buy the clothes. Um, no, I mean, no, what designers going to lend out the clothes? You don't do that. I don't know if you don't do a one time photo shoot or something like that. But anyway, they were dropping fifty thousand dollars, what ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, and Audrey and Audrey Smalls were saying that she would write out the checks, <laughs> and um, you know, and. It, <laughs> It was amazing for her. You know, it was a great experience for her from the way she talks about it. Um, let me see. Let me see what else. And uh, oh, her makeup is flawless. Look at that. I remember they talked about their makeup, Ebony Fashion Fair Cosmetics. They had a hard time getting that going because the models, they had a hard time finding makeup that that were for their skin complexion. 
they had to be like chemists to figure out how they're going to get their tone. Anyway, this was brought to Judith Johnson's attention, and she went to some of the top leading cosmetic companies to help them to solve this problem. And from the way she tells it, they laughed at them. They thought it was a joke, and they didn't take them seriously at all. So they created their own, and I think in the year of 74, I think it's 73 or 74, um, they launched out Ebony Fashion Fair Cosmetics to fill a void in the industry because they were being ignored. That's really unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. But anyway, good for Ebony Fashion. Good for Ebony. So that's another avenue. Really, really solved an issue. So, you know, um, so they were the first to really, really um, start doing more foundations for more brown complexions. Um, it was still diverse. But you know what? Later, these companies saw what they were doing and they copied them. So they wanted in on the action, so they started doing more darker complexion, offering more darker foundations and things of that nature. So I guess <laughs> I guess the money really spoke to them, you know, because they didn't want to do it at first, but I guess they wanted to copy Ebony, fashion, Ebony Cosmetics. Here they are. So uh, Rihanna, you wasn't the first. Iman wasn't the first. So <laughs> um, you have to look at Ebony as being the first to... Um, to create a cosmetic line for black people of different skin tones. Okay? Anyway, um, I think I have a... I know I'm going through this magazine. Oh, here's a photograph of uh, Johnny Johnson, the owner of Ebony Magazine. So that's the man I met years ago. Yeah, not knowing who he was, I was just walking by him to my the person I was with told me that's who he was. Who he was. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, spectacular. Fit to be fabulous. Season 2005, 2006. Look at that. Isn't that fabulous. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Oh, I just love being a maker of clothes. I just. To this day, I have books and books and books of fashion illustrations and designs uh, a lot of people have not seen. And eventually, I will be, you know, showing more of that as I get myself situated here in Chicago. But uh, the move from New York was really a drag, so I have to get the things I need to help me out here. Like, I need a, a table. I need to um, get my art supplies, because they're supplies I need to do my drawings and things like that. Um definitely want to get a cutting and sewing table, um, a mannequin, check a drape, things of that nature. Mind you, I'm still doing art because I do like doing tarot and I do like uh, creating art. I'm also in the middle of doing tarot cards as well. So that's, let's just say I keep myself busy. I am just way too creative for my own good. <laughs> I have so much in me. You have no idea. Oh my God, you just have no idea. Oh, look at this. Isn't that fabulous? Oh my God. Look at that. Mmm. This is the Changing Trends of Fashion, 2001 to 02. And let me see. I remember when they started putting the full figure model on the runway. And honey, she strut that runway like it was nothing, honey. She worked that runway. She sure did. I remember this one model, she happened to be full figure. She took a coat. I mean, normally people just put on a coat. But with her, she had to do twists and turns and throw it up in the air and then land it on her shoulder. And I said, I was so set up. I didn't know, like, I was like, what the hell did she just do? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I was like, how the hell she did just throw a coat on and just, just land it on her like that? I said, the whole audience just went up in arms. I'm telling you, it was, oh, my God. You had to be there to see it. It was a moment. You had to be there to see that. You really had to be there to see that. Oh, my God. That was, oh. Who was that? Okay. Got Tioni. Okay. Mm. Let's see. Let me see. 
Oh, this interesting dress. This is by Dominique Charlotte. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Isn't that fabulous? Oh. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel Navarro. Isn't that fabulous? Oh. I always saw myself standing next to these big names. You know, having my own design house just being creative and doing what I love to do. You know, I just want to spend the rest of my life just doing what I love. And that's about it, really. <laughs> now I'm just working this odd job, just doing that, just to make ends meet. You know, Chicago don't have a really big fashion scene. New York does. Um, I had to leave New York because of economic hardship. But anyway, that's a whole other story. Uh, so I'm just doing the best I can here. Uh, the best way I can. So, anyway, this is about Miss Eunice Johnson. <laughs> oh my God. Bear with me. <laughs> Bear with me. So, I'm just going to do a basic, uh, just say a uh, reading on her. You know, just, uh, uh, just a reading on Miss, Miss Eunice Johnson. I think I talked to her. <laughs> I think I talked about her and her connection to the Ebony Fashion Fair a little too long. So, anyway, okay, Spirit, talk to me. Talk to me about Miss Eunice Walker Johnson. Share with me you would like for me to know. Talk to me about Miss Eunice Johnson. Talk to me, Spirit, about Miss Eunice Johnson. I just want to know what's in her heart, her mind, her spirit. Just a general overall reading about who she is as a person, her years of experience, things of that nature. What's in her mind, her heart, her outcome, hopes and fears, what she's standing on, her past, her future, what crowns her, just all aspects of her life. Please share with me about Miss Eunice Johnson's spirit. Please share with me. Allow me to connect with her spirit. Share with me what you would like for me to know about Miss Eunice Walker Johnson.
just do one cookie spoon. Let's do more cards. Now it's me, I'm gonna miss you guys, Jazz. Interesting set of cards. <laughs> okay. Bear with me as I do this reading, y'all. First card I get for, for uh, Miss Eunice Johnson, but also represents her as the person, is the Queen of Pentacles. Uh, I get that she was very good with money. I get that she... Uh, was she? I think she, she uh, managed the money for the company. I don't know exactly what position that was. She worked with with Ebony uh, with the Ebony Company, but I think she was the treasurer, and she was responsible for allocate, allocating the money, where it go, where it went to. She managed it very well. Um, what else? She understood money and she handled it beautifully. Um, I also get a card of abundance. I get a card of uh, she was very well taken care of. So this represents her as the person, right? Now the second card I get, which represents the situation, um, is the uh, Six of Pentacles. So I get that she was very generous at helping people. Again, she was doing charities and things of that nature with the show. And uh, she would donate money. She would help people a lot um, that way. Um, she might help people out in a personal way, but I don't know what that entailed. But I get a lot of generosity coming in from her with this card. So definitely, you know, with the organizations that, are, that she was connected with through Ebony Fashion Fair... Uh, it created a lot of support for people that really needed that. So that's what I get with this card. Now, what's beneath her, uh, what she's standing on, is the uh, Nine of Swords. So she must have had some worries and stresses about different things going on. You know, being responsible for a, um, not only Ebony Fashion Fair, but also being a treasurer too. Uh, positive some other things going on that we don't wasn't aware of but uh, I'm sure there was some stresses that she had to deal with um, that she probably had a hard time resting or calming her mind whatever the case may be um, but um, yeah but I also get that she was very resilient too she, I get that she's a fighter I really get that yeah, I guess she she fucked through her struggles a bit. Yes, she had her stresses, she has her worries, she has her doubts, and all those different things, but somehow she managed to fight through them. 
That's what I'm feeling here. Now, in her past, it's represented by the uh, the emperor. Now, this could be someone she looks up to, someone. Um, in my head, I guess she had a very tough exterior about herself. And that could be influential to her father. I think he had a great love of her father. So my father's popping in my head for some reason. Uh, so I get a great love and respect for him. You know, I get a very uh, strong, dominant attitude. Um, yes, yeah, she was still ladylike. <laughs> but she was tough at the same time. She spoke tough. Um... You know, she wasn't like some just dame off the street. You know, she was a very smart woman. Um, she knew how to handle situations. Um, she had a keen sense for things. Um, the, why is good listener popping in my head? Um, yeah, good listener. Um, she, uh, hmm. Oh, so I could dominate the room? She so could dominate the room? Yeah. I don't know. I, it's just, as I'm reading this card, it's just things, it's like somebody's downloading stuff in my head as I'm looking at this, and, and it's like they're telling me something. And so so when you hear me say it, it's like I'm hearing, I'm telling you as I'm hearing it in my, in my head. It's like ringing in my head, like this, 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 this. So that's what I'm feeling with this card, you know? So it's like she's had a very... Um, it's dominant, dominant attitude, dominant way about herself. She put her foot down. She meant what she said. She said what she meant. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I'm getting here. This card is representing her past. All right. Now, what crowns her, but also represent future possibility, is that she had a sense of rebirth or newness about herself. Um, of new changes, new experiences. Um, I think her trip to Paris really, really uh, brought her mind on a lot of things, you know. And it, I think when she started this business, she didn't know what exactly what she was going to do. Uh, she had to learn as she went, um, and that was a huge change for her. And she had to work her way through it. Um, but one thing was certain she had the money to pay for the clothes and that really changed everything for her because once the word got out that this woman here who had an organization the where she actually literally buying the clothes um word got out and she and um people started treating her differently um yeah and I think she was one of the highest couture buyers I think she was given a um some kind of ceremony in uh, Italy somewhere where they, they gave her some kind of benefit because she was one of the highest buyers of couture in Italy. Yeah. Yeah. So now uh, throughout the years, throughout the years, she created, she had a reputation. People knew who she was, you know, and it, it, they knew what she was looking for. They knew what she liked what she didn't like they knew how to cater to her because she really was a buyer you know and she wasn't like some of these housewives of rich men that would just come in and maybe be they'll buy something but they take them a long time to make a decision about something well with her she knew what she wanted she wanted money oh she put her money down you know she she spoke with money in her back she spoke with money in her pockets she really did so, but anyway, where I got out, people knew who she was, and it made a big difference in her life, uh, and things got a lot easier for her uh, with, um, with buying things for the show. And what's representing the future is the fool, okay? A new journey, a new path, new direction, changes, things of that nature um, yeah I can only get general with this I don't 
see anything or, or yeah, that's basically it. Just Yeah, the show was a new journey for her. There was a lot of ups and downs with the show. Especially a lot of racism as they toured it. The different places that they went. There was a time where they threw rocks at them. There are times they couldn't even make certain events. Certain places. Because of the racism. Because back in the, back in the early days, they had a Greyhound bus or some kind of bus where they would tour the show. And in the southern states, where racism was really where, where was really strong and potent, I think still to this day, um, uh, they were given a hard time through things. So the journey was a bit tough in that aspect, and. So they had to make certain changes or mix certain dates to make up for what they missed. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling now. All right. Now the page now what's in her mind is represented by the page of swords. And I get a lot of, um, I want to say decisiveness. Um, a lot of quick decisions had to be made on things. She had to be alert and really, really wearing to go on certain things. And she needed her people to be quick on things as well. So I get a lot of, um, quick decisions, um, Last minute things could happen, so she had to be really, really quick about it. Really quick about things. This, yeah, she had to be really quick. That's what I'm feeling here. In her environment, I get the page of cups. So with this, I get a lot of good happy moments. Um, a lot of excitement, um, a lot of um, positive news come her way, especially in regards to the show. Again, a lot of people love the show. They would give her a lot of uh, uh, positive uh, feedback on it, and uh, they really made her feel really good. And uh, especially with the uh, with the college funds and diff in support of helping other people, I get that uh, that created a, a lot of good emotions for her because she felt like she was serving a purpose. And um, it made a lot of difference in people's lives. And she was very happy to be a part of the changes that she was helping with people. Yeah. That's what I get here. In our hopes and fears, and this being probably well, this being her hopes, I get also I get changes popping in my head. I get a lot of things working out in her favor. I also get things where um, uh, div divine right timing with things, and also with the show. The show, the purpose of the show came at the right time in this moment in place. It was supposed to happen. This show was meant to happen. It was it's, it was supposed to happen. That's what I'm feeling. This was supposed to happen. This was going to make a difference in people's lives. Inspire a lot of people. It was going to help a lot of people. This was divine. It's like it was backed by spirit. This was supposed to happen. The Ebony Fashion Fair had to happen. It needed to happen. It had to make a difference in people's lives. Because there was a purpose for it. And Spirit made that possible. She was in, it's like she, things flowed and aligned for it to happen. It's like she married this man, John Johnson. The business took off. 
through her event with meeting these ladies at a luncheon, fashion show came up, turned into a traveling fashion show, ended up happening for 50 years. And through those years, it created an impact in people's lives. I know it created an impact in my life. So I definitely, I know it made an impact in other people's lives. All right. Especially for black people and people of color and non-people of color. Well, we're all people of color. If you really think about it, we're all colored people. <laughs> um, no matter what you consider yourself, whatever ethnic background you are, we're all colored people. Anyway, that's what I'm feeling. Now for her outcome, I received like four cards, which is very unusual in this messaging. All right, so bear with me here. Um, so with the uh, with the outcome card, four cards being the first of the outcome, I get the uh, eight of wands. I get things are moving steady. Uh, this can also can mean communication travel information, things of that nature. I get a bit of arrogance with the uh, Five of Swords, an empty victory card. So I get a bit of arrogance, a lot of self-centeredness, conceit, um, possibly with this card here. And then I get the Sun. So a lot of success, fulfillment, joy with this card, all right? And then I get the high, I get the high of it. I get a search for spiritual meaning uh, as above, so below. Um, speak it and say it into existence. So I feel here. So, and I analyze this, these cards here, her outcome. Um, I get steady movement. Um, I want to say I have to watch her back. I get success, fulfillment, and spirit and spiritual um, spiritual connection. Sometimes I have to really look at these cards really intently because sometimes, um, although the cards have a different meaning, they have a specific meaning, but sometimes they could be saying something else. Um, so it's like, well, this is what's coming in my head right now. Uh, things were moving steady, uh, steady movement. Things were moving quickly for her. She had to really watch her back and know what she was doing. Um, but yet she has success and fulfillment and joy. And through that, she had her connection with spirit. Because she's a very spiritual woman. So I get a connection with God here. All right. That's what it's saying to me as a whole. That those four cards right there. The last messages, the last messages, the outcome of the cards. So. All right. Yeah. Things are moving steady. Quickly, she had to watch her back. Yet she has successful feeling and joy, and she always stayed prayerful and kind of connected with God. Yeah. That's her outcome. That was her outcome. Yeah. Very interesting. Wow. <laughs> Uh, if you made it this end through the video, made it this far of the video, thank you. <laughs> um, I really do appreciate that. And I've been, I was supposed to do this some time back for Black History Month, but I feel like this, Black History is every day, you know, don't really matter, because I'm going to be doing more Black people, as I read, you know, I'm going to be reading more Black people, so we don't have to be like in the month of February, because I personally feel like it should be every day, but... <clears throat> But that's just me. Um, 
yeah. So I thank you for joining me as I do this reading on Eunice uh, Walker Johnson. And um, yeah, if you want to know more about her, I will put links below. So you'll see that. Um, also, I want to plug in my uh, Etsy shop. Um, if I didn't mention it earlier, Sylvester's Fashion Art on Etsy, all one word. That information is below as well. And for those that would like to support my channel, that information is below as, as well. I really do appreciate the help. <laughs> oh, I really do appreciate the help. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah. Uh, thank you. And I'll be back soon with another reading. All right. Thanks. Guys, take care. Bye.